they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. Hey guys, we're in a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we have a special guest. Yes, Mr. On the Radar Radio, Mr. Step In, Step Out, Don't Get Stepped On, Gabe P, we in the building, you already know what it is, Talk of the Town, Koei, I appreciate you for showing me love all these years too, you know what I'm saying? All these years, hell yeah. I, right, it's been like, oh, it's been like three, four years now that we've known each other talk about. Talk of the Town is only 2019, so yeah, it's been Yeah, and I, and I feel like. Because you was moving already when uh, my show was starting up. Yeah, and I feel like we first kind of met around, um, like, probably pandemic time, like 2020-ish, oh, something like that, yeah. Yep, and we stay locked in. When did you confirm your drop? Like, when did you confirm that's going to be your shit? What? Your drop. Oh, like what I just did? Yeah. Well, the step in, step out thing, it kind of came, um, it came from um, the cypher that I did uh, with Hoodfly Mike and ASAP Ills. Because mm -hmm. I was like, because I, I, I don't even know how I started this, like, <laughs> I'm going to step out, they're going to step in. I think it just, I think it just kind of came to me naturally and when we started the freestyles. Every, every freestyle. Every time, yeah. yeah. And then um, Hoodfly Mike did the... Uh, step in, step out, don't get stepped on. So that's why, like, when I do the drops, like, a lot of times I'll be like, "Word to Hoodfly Mike," you know what I'm saying? Because Hoodfly Mike kind of came up with the with the "Don't get stepped on" part, and then right. and then in the background of that cipher, which is such a dope cipher, super <laughs> underrated. You hear like ASAP, it'll be like, "Don't get fucking stepped on," and like, so that kind of just stuck, and I kind of incorporated that into like the drop that I do in interviews and right. just like my radio drops. But um, yeah, that's kind of like how how it started. I really, there's really no magic sauce on how. <laughs> how I ever came up with it. I, yeah. Rob may remember it better than me, but I kind of just like, I just started it one day and I think it evolved over time because I don't think it always, I don't think it started off as a uh, step in, step out, don't get, st or step, I'm going to step out, they're going to step in. It kind of started as some other stuff okay. too, but it just kind of evolved yeah. into that. I don't really so remember who, who, works. who, yeah. I don't remember the first video that we, that I started it where it was just that, but yeah. it evolved over time into that. So you had to get it down packed. Yeah. All right, so we're going to play a little game. I'm some questions. Just okay, say. let's go. Rapid fire. Okay, most used emoji. Oh, definitely the laughing emoji. <laughs> like the crying with the two things, or the crying with the two. Yeah, the people take that. Like people be like, when I use the crying one, people be like, oh, like are you? Sad? No, I like that's like my that's I use <laughs> that's that hilarious. emoji because I think that it's funny as shit. I don't like using the other ones. I'm weird <laughs> like that. Okay, what is what song do you listen to for motivation? Oh, what song do I listen to for motivation? Man, um, that's a gr that's a good one. Why well, yeah, it's a morning. You got a long day. You're about to get in the car. What you about to throw on? Um, what's the what's the locks? <laughs> you ain't really about shit. You ain't really about shit about who? The locks and uh, DMX. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What's a conspiracy theory you think is real? Oh, um, that aliens walk among us. I did. I was just talking about this the other day. Okay, okay, I know okay. it sounds crazy, <laughs> but I really was just talking about this the other day with somebody. I'm like, bro, if if um if the government confirmed that aliens exist right one why would they do that and two is like how far could they really be how far could they really be and if they're coming here all this often and like there's bodies of aliens that the government has recovered then like you telling me that like they ain't try to come back for they get back or they ain't try to or like there aren't more of them just walking around so that's one or i don't know if, if it's a conspiracy theory but i definitely believe in bigfoot bigfoot yeah okay <laughs> okay, okay okay um What's the best thing about your hometown? Mm, man, um, the diversity of it. Like the like, I feel like where I grew up, because I grew up in two places. Like I grew up in Queens and I grew up in LA. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I like about both is the fact that I was always around multiple cultures. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah. never was just like I like my neighbors were Jamaican, Haitian, Dominican, Puerto Rican, yeah. Indian, yeah. Asian, and I think what was so cool about that was that. Through that, I was able to expose Learn myself to a lot. Yeah. yeah, and I was able to grow as a person and understand other people's cultures, um, which I know oftentimes is like where people grow up. Sometimes we're only exposed to one thing or one culture, mm -hmm. and then we're not really always able to understand mm -hmm. other people as we get older because we weren't grown up. We didn't grow up with them. So I think that's something really beautiful that I got to be around uh, growing up in New York. Okay. Last thing you spent money on? Oh, man. What what I spent money on? Oh, uh <laughs> Uh, the last thing I spent money on was Popeyes after my birthday party the other night. <laughs> when I got back to the telly, me and my homegirl from Florida, she came to visit because because uh, she's my best friend from high school. Mm -hmm. and we got back we got back to the telly, and I'm like, yo, I'm hungry. It was like 5 a.m. and for some reason there was a Popeyes open in Midtown, and we ordered we we buzzed down that Popeyes. That shit was crazy. Popeyes, yeah. Favorite app on your phone? Uh, Instagram. I feel like that's what I use the most. <laughs> And last one. 
Celebrity crush. Ooh, that's a good one. See, like everybody always says Ruby Rose, so I don't even really want to. I don't even really want to. I don't even want to say. I don't want to shoot my shot no more. Y'all got it. Yeah, y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all got it. Who's been, has Ruby Rose done it on the radar? No, but like I actually like all. Before I say like a celebrity crush, like all jokes aside, like I really love Ruby Rose as mm-hmm. like an artist, and I feel like yeah. she just doesn't drop enough. Right. Um. Right. But I would love. I heard. I heard that she might be getting ready to drop soon. So I would love. Um, for Ruby Rose. For Ruby Rose Pop to come doing on the radar. radar. All oh, jokes yeah. aside. Oh, yeah. oh, celebrity crush definitely gotta be SZA. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love me an R and B nature girly. That's my favorite. Okay. So how did you get started in the in your field? You feel like? Um, well, my story is interesting because I actually I started off at St. John's University mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in 2014. Um, I started off as a business major, funny enough, but then within like a couple weeks of school, like I tell the story a lot, like I was taking a calculus class and I'm like, I suck at this. <laughs> and I, but I found the radio station on campus that first month and I, and I had a radio show within my first three weeks there. So yeah. I was like, oh wow. And I like where I grew up, the community at the radio station was multicultural, a lot of different people there, but like it kind of reminded me of what I grew up around. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm gonna join this radio station. So I, I started at the radio station um, and then I ended up changing my major to, co- to communications. Mm-hmm. Um, and then everything just kind of went from there. Like um, in, when I was a sophomore, um, spring semester, Angie Martinez came to the uh, radio station to do her book tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's where she met myself and Nyla. And then ever since then, I've been at Power 105. Since so I was 19. And me and Nyla, you guys kind of started your journey together. Because yeah. y'all seem tight. Yeah, me and Nyla, like, we went to school together, obviously. We both went to St. John's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we didn't ever have, like, a radio show together okay. um, at school, but we had done, like, cross Crossover on other people's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we, you know, she did her own interviews on her shows. I did my own interviews on my shows. But, mm-hmm. you know, when they're like, oh, like, you know, who do you want to do the interview with you with Angie? I was like, oh, obviously Nyla, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. um, me and her did that together, and it's just been cool because we both, you know, have, like, the same trajectory in our career, but we both come up at the same time. And yeah. it's just some cool St. John shit at the end of the day, too, that we're able to do this yeah. together, too. So do you feel like your school kind of helped you, in the sense, get this opportunity? Or do you feel like school is where you learned everything and you kind of outsourced from there? Um, I feel like school, like, one thing I tell people about going to school is, like, I say... I tell people to go to school, like, not only, like, because, yeah, again, an education is important, but sometimes, like, you know, certain schools. The network, you mentioned. Yeah, you network. Like, certain schools provide better education than they do networking. Certain schools provide better networking than they do education. I feel like St. John's would provide a better networking than education because a lot of the classes I took weren't great or I don't even use to this day. But they did. They did. Connect you with a lot of people. A lot of incredible people, obviously, Angie. And I took some classes like Photoshop and things like that that were Mm -hmm. able to help me, you know, even do what I do now. Um, So, yeah, so I would say, like, I would say, like, St. John's really did help me with the networking because, like I said, I got that. I I met Angie through it and I met Nyla through it and Ramel, Mm -hmm. who works at Republic, Diamond, who works at Z100. So we kind of built this, like, tight-knit bond of, like, a St. John's community within the music industry. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're all all still friends now to this day. Type shit. Yeah. Yeah. That seemed pretty locked in. Did you yeah. finish college though? Yeah, I finished college. Yeah, I graduated oh, I in 2018, and then. Damn. So yeah. you was in school at working on the radar and working at the radio. No. School? So when I was in school, oh, okay. um, well, I got my full time. Well, I was interning from, like, when I was a sophomore to when I graduated in oh. 2018. Oh, so right. I was already working at the radio station for two years as an intern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then before I graduated, I got a full-time position to run all the social media for Power 105. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, and then that summer I graduated is when I started on the radar. So on the radar, I started five years ago um, this month uh, in 2018. Yep. So it started around your birthday or the birthday party? So you mix your birthday with the anniversary? Yeah, I mix the birthday with it. Okay, I mix the yeah. anniversary. We're going to do something else for on the radar for the five year. Like a more like um, proper so- installation, like a more pop-up thing. Mm-hmm. But... The birthday party we did mix with the five year, just kind of kill two birds with one stone with yeah, that. Yeah, but like, how how many days after was it? Do you know the exact dates? Well, okay, so the the thing is, there's like a it's like a floating date, right? Because <laughs> okay. the first ever on the radar upload on the channel was I think the 27th uh-huh. of August, but we had it uploaded originally on the Power 105 one channel before yeah. before that. So it probably is earlier, but I I count the five year anniversary of on the radar being the day that we first uploaded the first interview to right. the channel. Of course. So it's like I think it's like the, either the 27th or the 29th. Yes. But this month, but yeah. That's crazy because Talk of the Town's anniversary is the same month as my birthday too. For real? That ass. That's what I'm like, how close is it? I think it's like it's like, you know, you you like around your birthday you feel real inspired. You start you start Doing to think about shit. like yeah. things I should have done, things that I can do, and then you're like, all right, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna try to build yeah. something out of this. Build something up, hell yeah. Okay, so um 
So, okay, so working at the radio. Mm. When did you get your slot? Because you have a morning slot now. I got two slots now. I got uh, the Friday night slot, which is on the radar. Yeah. Um, with me and DJ Will, and then I got the Sunday slot. Um, but I, I first got my slots. Um, normally, when you start doing radio, they start you off on the overnight, mm -hmm. um, two to five in the morning, yeah. just because that's kind of like where you can learn and make mistakes right. before you go to the middays or during the day, right? right? So I started doing it. It's about I think it's almost two years now mm -hmm. that I've been doing that I've been on the radio. Um, but they started me off September of twenty. 21 okay. and it was overnights and I was doing five days a week so I was and so I'm not I wasn't really a night person before that like I kind of was but like I hated being up at like five six in the morning mm -hmm. but it was cool because what it taught me was it taught me to be comfortable with being up at night mm -hmm. so I'll be up at two from two to five in the morning and then I would just sleep during the day yeah and that's when I started doing those shifts and then after um after that you know, like kind of, I'll say like six months in, they stopped me doing that. And then they gave me the midday shifts that was rotating when, between me, Nyla, and Steph Cakes. Yeah. And then like four or five months into that, they gave me the Friday night slot to play yeah. on the radar freestyles and, right, you know, right, just right. go crazy on. Yeah. And then a couple months after that, they gave me the Sunday slot. So everything was like a very slow progression. But yeah. like, you know, it happened over time, you know, fairly quickly, I guess you could say. Right. No, for sure. For sure. So like when doing on the radar and doing those freestyles and things like that. Did the radio station take time to like want to be help with that bridge or you really had to lay down the foundation? Um, it took time. I mean, because you know what it is like, I feel like young people, we have to prove ourselves. Well, but, I, but I think in general, too, everything is like a proving like you got to prove like a, a proof of concept. Right concept. I think consistency too. Consistency too. Because I think when I first started, out, I, I I always thought that like I deserved everything like off the rip because I was mm -hmm. just like I had the vision. That's honest. But you gotta. But as I worked more and as I focused more and as I kind of learned more, I realized that like it's not about like just having the vision. You gotta prove the vision. You gotta show the consistency. Mm -hmm. And it's like the numbers gotta be there too at the end of the day. Sure, yep. So if I'm not doing anything, then why would they? pick me up or have me do other things with them which mm -hmm. I, I understand now because I see it now because I'm at a certain level where it's like I understand that yeah. um, but like something I would preach to like younger people who want to do what we do or mm -hmm. who want to get into media like you just got to like actually prove yourself first and honestly consistency is everything like the more consistent you are the more your brand's going to get out there the more videos you make the more your brand's going to get out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and as my good brother La Russell just said if you get one view on a video you're already doing something right because somebody's watching out there so yep. that's kind of how that happened that's right okay so as progressing now how you go how how are you going about picking your guests now um i mean like you know the one the, the, here's the incredible thing about on the radar right <laughs> the incredible yeah. thing about on the radar is that you could have someone like drake on the platform mm -hmm. but then you could still like i shot um I shot like Roscoe, Roscoe G the other day. Mm -hmm. You could still have that duality of having someone big like Drake and Roscoe G on the same platform. Yes. Um, I think hope, by the time people see, see this, ESTG will probably be out. We just we shot ESTG, yeah. but then also that same day we shot somebody locally from New York. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's really just like I gotta see the vision. Somebody from my team gotta see the vision too with the artist because at the same time it's like I can't be everywhere all at once anymore yeah, like i can't always a be a lot of hats you wear now exactly i wear a lot of hats i got a lot of different shows i do but i do do my due diligence of being yeah. able to tap in with up and coming artists whether they yeah. be from new york or be from other cities no. um but that's pretty much like i know that's a very broad way to go about it <laughs> yeah. or very broad way to say it but it's really how it is honestly yeah. like there's no magic secret sauce on how i pick artists for on the radar mm -hmm. it's just that like i see it and i'm like okay that's a good look for us and that's a good look for the artist mm -hmm. and it makes sense because they're moving right now yeah. and then that's kind of how we'll pick them yeah, I was about to say, and that's something I feel like we appreciate, especially all of us that's still working up, is that, like, you know, there is no boundaries now of you blocking those local artists. Yeah. They can still be up there with the Drakes and ESCGs and so on and so forth. Yeah, like, you, and yeah. it's cool because they get to be like, oh, this is where Drake stood? Like, that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> but then, like, you know, also we have artists like uh, Roy Woods, who is one of Drake's artists, mm -hmm. who um, came yesterday, and he's like, bro, I love this platform. Um, cause I use it to find artists, not just from New York, but from everywhere. Like we've had like local Toronto yeah, artists. Yeah, I travel too. Yeah. Yeah. We've had artists from all around come on. So it's kind of become like cool. Cause like I said, it's like, you could have the local artists from down the block, wherever you from, but you might also see like real boss and Richie, La Tyler, mm -hmm. sleazy world, go sleepy hollow, like bigger artists on the show mm -hmm. too. And it's just like a nice little blend of everything. Time. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, so what's your favorite viral moment from On The Radar? Ooh, favorite viral moment from On The Radar, Because you got a couple. I know, we have a few. <laughs> Definitely, like, 
I, I'll do like one interview one and then like one like freestyle one because I feel like that's the best way to split it up. Yeah. Um, favorite interview one got to be the Ice Spice Nike Tech one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nike, you owe me a check, right? <laughs> um, but uh, but that's got to be because that one was so like unexpectedly that popped off too. Right. And it was like a clip in the interview that I didn't even think to cut. Somebody else cut it, which I thought was even funny. I'm like, how did I miss this? <laughs> um, right. And then favorite freestyle one, like, like obviously D thing had kicked everything off, and I thought that that was such an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you can't deny that, like looking at the four one stuff, but then mixing like in like Jen, Kyle, and, and Tata in with like Yeet and Uzi, like beats, like that's oh, yeah, that was that's a thing dope. On TikTok, right? Like that's incredible, and like mm -hmm. the fan they did a uh, I showed um, in my interview with four, my second interview with four one that's coming out soon. Like uh, I showed Tata, Tata never saw the Family Guy mashup, <laughs> so like I showed Tata the Family Guy mashup, and Tata was like, "How did I miss this one?" <laughs> but that just goes yeah. to show you how like crazy that how time crazy period that was of like right. having yeah. all these different mashups at the same time. So yeah, I'll definitely say like the from the freestyle one, like watching the four one one get all these different remixes was just like super crazy. Nah, for sure, for sure. So, but um, Drake's got verse of the month. Yes, for genius. Was you expecting that or like? Was I expecting Drake or the verse of the month? The verse of the month. No, I was not expecting that. I think it's cool, like you know, because I think that um the like a lot of people like. With this Drake freestyle, it's kind of like a return to format for Drake. Like, I feel like Drake was recently like, oh, like, they miss an old Drake girl. Don't tell me because he's going to put the For the Dogs album out. Um, but I feel like that this freestyle was cool because it kind of gave a little bit of that old Drake. And I feel like that's why I got that verse of the month, too. For sure, for sure. So how'd you get the Drake call? Like, what, what was happening? What's going on? Well, um, <laughs> the real like the real story behind it is is um, Drake had, like, DM'd us, like, uh, about a month ago saying he wanted... Like, it's really, like, not that crazy of a story. Like, he okay. DM'd us saying he wanted to come up, uh -huh. wanted to bring Sench, and then tour happened in new york and then next thing you know he was there okay so how was that we got to secure the building because drake is coming how was that yeah. well i mean like all right so with that like because me speaking on how that goes would definitely yeah, get me was in it trouble. top secret like the day he was coming like nobody can know but staff i mean yeah just staff knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like just staff knew you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna speak on like how his how his security moves at all because <laughs> no, that's not my place yeah, but yeah, yeah. it was trust me the 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 block and everything we it was secure Okay. without saying too much <laughs> okay 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 so um now do you feel like okay you coming up now i'm pretty sure like you know when the um when it starts to really hitting the fan a lot of people that probably wasn't supporting you back then are now super supportive right and things like that do you feel like um you was blocked of any opportunities in, on your way up um I mean, yeah, like, I feel like there were a couple times where I could have had somebody bigger or somebody who I really wanted to, but they were just like, mm -hmm. oh, like, the platform doesn't feel right. Um, especially when it was, like, coming out the pandemic and it was a right. lot of drill artists, like, mm -hmm. right? Like, people, like, seeing that many drill artists on a platform scared a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, I, I knew that, like, as everything opened back up, we would be able to diversify more. Yeah. Um, which, I, which we definitely did. You know what I'm saying? You were there when, when 2C and H came. Yeah. Um, so once we were able to diversify, I was like, look, guys, like, it's not just a drill platform. We could do more. So, like, mm -hmm. these, these other artists that you're, like, afraid to bring me, like, mm -hmm. they can come. And then, you know, mm -hmm. slowly started rolling in. We did the Rolling Louds. We met a lot of incredible people at the Rolling Louds and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And then that's how we were able to kind of expand the show and, and also get those blessings. But it's the business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's part of, it's like, having to prove yourself and trying to get those looks, like, it's just part of the game. Like I, I don't take anything personal because okay. I know it's just business. Business at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, it, it is what it is. What advice would you give those people that's I guess working on their brands and crafts and trying to get, mm. trying to be more diversified? Man, like, <laughs> I know it's hard to say. It's but. no, it's like it's it's cliche. It's hard to say because it's cliche, uh -huh. right? But like, it's really like you just got to stay consistent with everything because mm -hmm. consistency is the key. And then also like like let's say, and I tell this to like you know. People who have like New York platforms that are like drill platforms too, like friends of mine. I'm like, look, man, like you certain things don't last forever. Like you look at every music scene, like music scenes have died out over time. Mm -hmm. Not saying that drill is going anywhere right now because it's still very prominent, so very popular in New York. But like mm -hmm. if you want to be known past this era, mm -hmm. you gotta expand. You gotta like you gotta look at when people like um I know you have K Carbon coming to coming to yeah, do the yeah. show, right? Shout yeah. out Toby. Like you know, it's like doing things like that, and you oh, know, yeah. you we you, just did watch me fat. You did fat. Oh, you did fat. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying you meet one person from Memphis, and that opens 
a million, million doors, doors to yeah. everybody else. You know, yeah. I did Glorilla's first interview in New York. Yeah. That opened every door to Memphis I could ever have asked for. Right. You know what I'm saying? I did YTV yeah. Fat. Then I got to speak with Moneybag at the BET Awards. Like, mm -hmm. there's like, you, once you start kind of expanding it and you show people in other cities, like, hey, look, you're mm -hmm. also welcome here. It's not just about me. It's not just about New York. Um, or it's not wherever you, wherever you live, whether it be yeah. LA, Memphis, whatever, like, you show them that like they can do artists from other places mm -hmm. too. And that's how I explain people like explain to people that like that's how you expand and you grow. And yeah. also consistency. Like if you're not being consistent, you're gonna get lost in the algorithm. So mm -hmm. if you really wanna keep growing as a personality, as a brand, as a show, yeah. um, as a platform, like mm -hmm. you just gotta stay consistent and drop like every day. Yeah, that's what's happening to us right now a little bit because like on the blog, because you know, we got the blog and the interviews. Yeah. On the daily tip, it is a lot of drill stuff because they do so much stuff. Yeah. But on the YouTube side of things, the people we sit down with are more Memphis, so I'm trying to like, or just out of state period, so I'm trying to mix it all together. Right, like you got a bunch of Jersey people coming here after this, yes. which is dope. Right. I so love that. I'm just trying to expand more too. You know what I'm saying? But people also don't be. I feel like doing the research. I feel. What? People don't. Oh, be like doing don't the do the research, research for artists. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like let's say you ask for something, they might not do the research. They might just see a glimpse at it and be like. Mm. Well, here's the thing, too, is like a lot of people in like other states, like sometimes even in other states, they'll be like, oh, I know fat from your show, but I don't know about the drill stuff from your show, yeah. which is kind of interesting now, considering that we came up off, off so much the, drill, the New York, New York drill music yeah. that it's like, oh, yeah, I know YTB fat, but I don't know who 4-1 is. What? But it's it, but to me, that's kind of that. It's a good thing. That's a good yeah, problem so to now have. You can scroll and look. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like now you can go introduce yourself to all this other music and shit. Type shit, type shit. Oh, yeah. Do you feel like the. Um freestyle sort of overpowered your interviews or like what do you think i mean absolutely but the, I, that's not a bad thing you know like yeah, i don't have a problem i don't it's not a bad thing i don't have a problem with it because like the interviews i still love doing and like i feel like the interviews for me like yeah it's a content piece but it's also a conversational tool to build a relationship with an artist mm -hmm. um beyond the freestyles like me and roy woods yesterday we had a great like 40 minute conversation about life mm. being a fan being a uh, he's a pops now he gave up okay. doing drugs but like we built like a real connection, connection through these interviews so oftentimes like i look at the interviews like yeah it's a great interview like real fans are gonna love it and it might not get as many views as a freestyle mm -hmm. but like it gives me an opportunity to speak with the artist beyond the freestyle and then through that like we build this friendship with each other and then it's like oh now when if i need like you know I, when he left i was like yo roy like Send me like 10 artists from Toronto that you like because I want to do some shit with them. Right. He's like, I got you. And then like, you know, the interviews are just another form of networking to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also great content pieces. Please go watch my interviews because there's some, <laughs> the really good ones. The G Herbal one that I did last year is one of my favorites. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Thank you. Yes, Thank that you. G Herbal was a good one. Glorilla. I feel like you have a couple good ones. Yeah, we got a couple good. We got a bad, the Destroy Lonely one. Like, Destroy Lonely doesn't do interviews. Doesn't do interviews at all. And we and the whole interview, me and him were, like, talking about video games. Like, you know, <laughs> but, like, it's cool because I also use the, my interviews as, like, a way to get artists out of their typical, okay, how'd you start rapping? Okay. Right, right, right. Everybody asks Destroy Lonely about Playboy Cardi. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to talk to Destroy Lonely about him. Overwatch and, like, shit that he likes and doesn't like to do, yeah. you know? So, right. yeah. Yeah, so, um... So, and yeah, people really enjoy, I think, sitting down with you, too, because they feel like you're not clickbaity like some interviews try to... Right. Yeah. That's the point. Like, yeah. I think, like, you know, I came up under Angie. I say, I say this, too, in interviews. Like, I came up under Angie and, like, you know, kind of like that old school form of interviewing. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me, if, like, people want to get into the business and get into the drama, then we could do it. But I'm not going to reach for it. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be like, okay, so you did this, like... Nah, like, I'll kind of let them bring it up naturally, and then if I could tell that they want to talk about it, or they tell me before, like, yeah. yo, I want to address this, mm -hmm. then let's address it. But until then, like, I don't, you know, I don't care, because, like, I say I value being able to do 10 of these with you than versus just doing one of them with you and, right. and burning the bridge off of, off right. of a clickbait. Or something else happens. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, on the Radar Records... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Have we, you didn't really announce that you... No, it's announced. Oh, okay. I, yeah, it's, it's, fake. it's announced. I'm talking I about, like, with the deal. What deal? But Empire, no? Oh, no, we don't have... No, no, no. So what we're doing... I'll tell you what... I can say what we're doing Empire. Shout out Bobby. Oh, so you don't have um, to, but like... No, no, it's not, no, it's not like a deal with Empire. We're working on a project with like Dusty Locaine and 95MM. So um, we got that coming up, which I'm super excited about. Free Dusty. He's going to be home soon. Right. Um, on the Radar, still like an independent label as of right now. We're still, okay. you know, taking the meeting, shopping around, but we are doing like little one-off projects with like... Artists. Empire with Dusty. Um, I got a collab project with Matt Ali, which is going to have Cash, uh, Cash Cobain. We're working on, on getting Wolfface on it, Wolfface Joey, yeah, Avante Wolfface the Joey Singer, himself. Groovy, B-Jax, Ken Rebel, Chow Lee, uh, Trap Floor Guap, yeah. uh, 
917 Racks is on that project too. Like yeah. that's something I'm working with him. Mm -hmm. um, I got a three pack with 917 Racks coming out. Okay. Um, so you got a couple projects you're working on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm really in the space now where it was funny because my man sent me this clip of Gucci talking earlier and it was like Gucci was talking about how like the label's like why you drop all this music a year or why do you drop so much like shouldn't you should drop once a year and he's like that's how they try to control you um he's like you got to realize that music is an asset so the more music you have the more leverage you have mm, yep 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 so like when did you transition it into a label um we started in January because we're like, yo, we have all these freestyles mm -hmm. and there's so much that we could do with these freestyles and there's so much extra, of course, money that we're leaving on the table by not of putting course. these on streaming, but yeah. also opportunities that we could give artists like mm -hmm. to have like because some of these artists don't have big streaming numbers like yeah like others do but like if we put them in an on the radar ecosystem if someone like it's like how people could get lost in our channel for hours by watching a couple freestyles right. they could get lost on our streaming server on our streaming uh okay. page by like you know they go watch the block work free or listen to the block work freestyle but then they're like, oh, look, they just dropped a, a record called Sexy Besties out now, right? <laughs> then they go listen to that. Or then they'll go back and they'll listen to some old, like, um, like Desi Hines or Aaron Rose freestyle. Like, there's, like, a lot. It's like a spider web, right? Where it's yeah. like you could get lost in it for hours. So that's kind of, like, my thought process with the record label and even on the radar now. Nice, nice, nice. So, like, when... Okay, so... I guess you now make, like sexy bestie. They have like a different cover art than the on the radar. Right? Yeah, that's like that's like a yeah. real single though. No, nah, I know that's a real single. So like, when do you determine we're gonna separate it for as this will be a freestyle and this will be a song? Well, the freestyles obviously are just like they come on the platform like yeah. like Maya or Blockwork or anybody and like they just do their shit and then it goes up on streaming. It goes up on the page. Mm -hmm. um, sexy besties and like like the Fadi Afrobeats record and even what I did with. Um, D Weathers, mm -hmm. those were like in studio, like we created those records together. Like when we did Sexy Besties, that was when me and Matt were working on our project together. Mm -hmm. And then he put Chow while we were there on it and Vontae on it. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, yo, like, we should put this out together. Like this would be great. And then we right. came up with like the porn VHS kind of <laughs> cover art, like yeah. the Pounder Drown, the yeah. Two Sizzy Two Horny. in studio. Yeah, like we came, well, I mean, fire, fire. the cover art we came up with after the fact, because okay. I had a different idea for it, but we had mm -hmm. to move some things around for it. Yeah. But we had done that, uh, we had like an eight hour studio session recording the Me and Matt Ali project, and mm -hmm. that cover, and that song was one of the songs that came out of it. Fire, fire. Okay, so like, so, but the Drake one got a billboard entry. Mm hmm. <laughs> How was that when you got the news? Crazy. Honestly, like, <laughs> I always wanted to see, like, the on the radar name be, um, be on billboard but to think it would be like with drake was like not something we expected and it's cool because we're also like i always said i want to be the bridge the gap between um the uk and, and america and i think we did that very well with aj tracy digga d and a lot of other artists and of course central c and yeah. this being central c's first ever american billboard mm -hmm. entry is it's so great to be a part of that because I would have thought, honestly, I would have thought Doja would have been, right. but I don't know why Doja never did because I know it's a big record over here still, but I don't I know. I think that, I don't know, this is my theory on Billboard. I think that they'd be like trying to figure out which category to put certain songs. Mm. That's what I think. But I don't know where Doja, Doja's still hip hop though. Like it's the Doja, like, poppy. I mean, no, I'm, I'm talking about Central C's Doja record. Yeah. 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 No, it's not really poppy. It's definitely hip hop. But I think, but I don't know why it did. I feel like it probably might have been, but I guess maybe at the time Central C, like they would consider consider him like an international act. Maybe there's a different chart for that. I gotta check. Yeah. But um, but being part of his first ever Hot 100 entry Three, is four, that's yes. awesome, man. So Where? shout out Central C, man. Shout out Drake. Wait, wait, wait. So when you when you was building on the radar records, mm. trying to get I guess some of these freestyle cleared, was labels giving you a hard time? I mean, like, a lot of the ones that we put out aren't with labels. labels are like, most of them are independent artists, but, like, we do put some of them out with labels. And, you know, it's just kind of like what we learn, what we're learning is just, like, the ins and outs of labels. Like, we're learning with the labels on how to, like, mm -hmm. go about putting these freestyles out. Like, um, shout out Def Jam. Def Jam has been great, uh, a great partner with um, getting these freestyles out. And we put the one out with Pap Chanel. So that one's out. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a few others coming with labels, too. But definitely working with labels does take a little bit more of a time because there's more cooks in the kitchen right um which is why like you know i love that on the radar still works with so many independent artists because right. it just makes my job a lot easier to put oh, these yeah. freestyles out and you still like you say you're giving them a network to help them get their recognition and all that absolutely like that. so of course with all this stuff picking up for you you need us to build a team 
Yeah. I love how you support you show love to your team. They come with you everywhere. Literally, they come with me. Toby's everywhere. outside on a, on a Zoom call right now for our five year anniversary show. So, um, so like, how did you confirm like who you wanted on your team, and like, how did you go about that? Here's the craziest shit about my team, right? <laughs> no, this is really crazy. What's up? I never interviewed any of them mm. to be a part of the show. Like, a lot of how my team came around is like they really were just like. Well, Rob came around, my main producer and engineer. He came around because he was like the one who was working at the other studio that I worked at, that I was shooting at when we started doing On the Radar, right? Mm -hmm. um, John was just someone who I had known for years, but we never worked on anything. He just started like coming around and coming around and coming around, bringing me more like lyrical type of artists, more like Benny the Butcher type artists, and from Buffalo too. Like he brought me a lot of like the Griselda guys. Mm -hmm. um, nice, nice, nice. Calvin was just coming around being a photographer. Like he came around, and that's how he started with us. Um, and then Toby was started coming around by bringing me artists. Like she brought me Real Boston Richie. Like I did Real Boston Richie's second interview ever and his first ever freestyle. Mm. And then she was like, let me do your schedule. And then over time, like me and Toby built this rapport and then everybody just kind of became a part of the team naturally. Nice. And it was never like, a, oh, like let me interview you to become a part of the team. Mm. Let me do this, let me do that. No, like everybody who's part of On The Radar has joined On The Radar because they just came around and it kind of has just become like this family dynamic. Not so much like a, I'm your boss. It's like, no, of we're course. all like a family. Even though we try not to work business with that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have found a balance of like being everywhere together, going out yeah. together and also like being a family and, and working together at the same time. Working together at the same yeah. time. That's really, that's really nice. That's really cool. So right. like the ciphers. Yeah. I feel like the, your ciphers are super evolving right now. It's crazy. Because I, I seen you did a Florida cipher. Yes, I that's coming. Uh, we're doing a. Uh, we're gonna probably drop LA and Florida back to back. Okay. So LA has like Reason from TDE, Simba, mm -hmm. uh, Pac-Man the Gunman, and a few other artists on that one. And mm -hmm. then Florida has. Um, it's just a ton of the upcoming Florida artists. Okay. And we're really trying to like when we go to these different cities. Like we're not doing it in Philly, but like we're really trying to do these ciphers in different cities to showcase the upcoming talent in every city. Like we did it with the ladies in Atlanta, ladies. which was super dope. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just trying to make yeah, them bigger and, and better. The ladies night one did really, really good. Was that the first ever one, right? The ladies so, night? The first ladies night one was the one with Lola and all that. Yeah, I know. But was that the first ever cypher? No. What was the remember. first ever cypher? Yeah, what was the first ever cypher? I don't remember. But that one was talked about a lot. The ladies night one, the first one. Was it So's B? It might've been So's B for L had the first so's cypher. I, I'm not sure. It's hard. I gotta I know check. You do a lot. You do a lot. <laughs> I, and Toby's got my phone, so I can't even check, but it might all be right. So's. I don't know. I gotta check that. So what's the plan with the cipher? You just say you want to go to different states to definitely showcase all the yep. artists. Do you are those are you uploading those on DSPs too? Some of them we're trying, Some yeah, trying. yeah, we're trying. But I think the plan is just like we're just gonna keep trying to do what we do in different cities. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we did it in Florida, we did it in in Atlanta, we did it in um, Any LA. Place you want to do it that you haven't yet? Ooh, that's a good question. The UK, obviously, UK. Oh, yeah, London. The UK. And I kind of want to do one in like Jamaica. Hmm. Who are you thinking from the UK? You want them all upcoming or you want to do something big with the popular ones? I would love to do something big with the popular ones. But again, like I'm not going to sit here and like name everybody's name because I know there's a like, I'm not fully in tune with all the UK politics. Like I, I know enough, but I don't want to just speak and be like, oh yeah, these people. Yeah. But like, you know, if I could get like at least some of the people who've been on my show before, like Digga D and AJ in like the same room to do something, mm -hmm. that would be super incredible. Like I would nice. love to do something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or have like Giggs curate a cypher because, you know, Giggs is like the mayor out there. So I really want. <laughs> to like have someone you yeah. know have a figurehead like gigs who's a legend like coordinate that cypher so we'll see okay so you had the um so i'm like what's happening Something so going on, out there. on the radar anniversary happened you got the ciphers you got the freestyles what's some other plans you have for on the radar right now? um well right now we're planning on doing on the radar international so we're doing that we got an international tour planned um we have the, oh, international the, tour? yep an international Where tour going? we're going to go to all th we're going to go to uh london toronto vancouver montreal uh jamaica uh i want to do puerto rico dr germany france uh wait germany yeah germany france Italy, Spain, okay. Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa. So we want to do like, we want to cover everything. Like we want to go all around the world with the show. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start working on that next year. Okay. This year we're going to finish up our tour here in America. So we're going to go to the rest of the cities that we had planned already. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to other cities. Like, you know, Sleazy, Sleazy's from where? Kansas? Mm -hmm. Sleazy wants us to come to Kansas. So okay. we might do that. I don't even um, know a lot of artists in Kansas. You know, uh, you know which has a crazy music scene right now? Cool. Milwaukee. Milwaukee? Yep, so we want to okay. go to Milwaukee, so we're talking to I mean, like... I feel like St. Louis doing anything. Like St. Louis got a great Big scene, so, yeah. so we're working with different... You know, we're open to doing other cities in America, but right now we're going to close out with the cities that we already announced that we have left, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go international. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. All right, last one, quick this or that game. All right, let's Power do it. or Snowfall? 
Wait, power? You said power. Okay. Road trips or flights? I like road trips. Hotels or Airbnb? Hotels. Twitter or threads? Twitter. Roundtable talk or radio? Radio. Drill or Jersey Club? Ooh, Jersey Club. Lounges or strip clubs? Lounges. And Charlemagne or Joe Budden? Charlemagne. <laughs> Come on, man. I can't. That's home team. I can't do that. Nah, that's all. That's all. All right, so tell the people how can they tune in. If they don't know, they should know. You already know it's Mr. On The Radar Radio. Follow me at On The Radar, at Gay PMYC on everything. Subscribe. Go show my sister some love. Go show her some support because she's been supporting all of us through all these years. It's Gay P. We signing off. Bow.